If you need to adjust levels in your Ableton Live set with your MIDI controller, then I think Touch OSC is one of the best ways to do that. Here's why. You can create and add a, a fader anywhere in your Touch OSC layout, and that'll always be perfectly in sync with Ableton Live. You can move the fader on Touch OSC, and it's going to update Ableton Live. You can move Ableton Live, and it's going to update Touch OSC. In this video, I want to share a preview of a lesson from my recent Touch OSC course that I just wrapped up that I think you're really going to love. I'm going to show you how to add a fader to a template in Touch OSC, uh, and then how to sync that with Ableton Live, and, and how to make sure that it can communicate bi-directionally. Simply meaning when I move the fader in Touch OSC, it moves in Ableton Live. And when I move a fader in Ableton Live, it moves in Touch OSC. It's really easy to do. Check out this video and this lesson to see how. Okay, so let's continue this theme of creating templates. Uh, we have, and I have loaded on my iPad, my simple playback template. I want to take this and I, I just want to tweak it slightly. And I want to add a fader uh, for our click and our fader for master volume. Uh, and this will get us into creating faders and then making sure that they're syncing with Ableton Live so that as I adjust it in Ableton, you see it adjust on the template as well too. And I'm going to do all this this time from the iPad as opposed to from the computer, just so you could see a little bit of what's different. So I've got uh, my iPad connected here. I'm uh, screen sharing. Now I'm gonna do, um, in order to add this fader, I'm gonna have to shift everything over a little bit because I think what I wanna do is uh, essentially have my buttons grouped together and then have my faders together. So let's see if I can move in here so I can see because there's a glare. Uh, and I'm just gonna start moving these over I'm gonna move this to there, move this to there, move this in. Okay, and again, we're gonna try to keep all this lined up. Okay, so that feels pretty good to me. Now let's add a fader. So when I'm on a uh, external device, there's two ways I can do this. One, I can press uh, up here to create a control, or I can long press, which is essentially the same thing, same thing as right clicking, and we can create a fader. Now. I don't know why I want this fader to be like a yellow color. So I'm going to go ahead and go into color. Oh, I lucked out on that one. Okay. First try. Apparently color picking is easier on the iPad. Uh, there's my fader. Now let's make it a little bigger. So I'm just going to grab these handles. Okay. And again, we want to try to line this up. Let me move the iPad so I can see it a little easier. Okay. So it's as tall as this. It's as tall as that. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Uh, this seems off to me. Yeah, that was a little off. Okay. And we can compare this. This is kind of a poor man's way to make sure these are the same height. Um, okay, that seems pretty good to me. Now let's just nudge it over right about there. Okay, uh, so let's make this click. And then let's make one that is master. So I'm going to uh, select this. I'm going to do my copy command, which I clicked in the upper left-hand corner. And then we'll click this to paste. And now we can drag. And we have a fader that looks exactly the same. Um, now let's add um, a label. So we're going to go back up here. We're going to do create label. And we'll, oops, let's not do that. Let's delete. <laughs> let's add a label. And let's try to click right, oops, in the middle. There we go. I'm going to add this here. Yeah, we'll try to line that up and let's make this uh, say click. So let's go down to values. We're going to go to text. Uh, oh, not touch. What are we looking for here? Text. There we are. Okay. Uh, and we're going to say click again to me. I love that I can design on the iPad, but um, I still think it's a better experience to, uh, to design on the computer. For me, it's a little easier. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or what um, color wise. Um, gosh, I don't want to go through the whole color thing again. So what I am going to do though, is take my background off, uh, and then let's take our outline off. Okay, great. So there's my click volume while we're here. Let's copy this and I can, uh, paste and then let's drag and let's call this, what do we want to call it? Master volume. I think, okay. I'm trying to get this lined up here. Um, Yeah, this is getting to be a little harder than I thought it would be. Okay, that's close enough for now. Uh, let's line this up, uh, change our text to master. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that works for me. We're close to being lined up. Oop, that one's off slightly. Okay, this is where, to me, um, 
having the keyboard keys, which I guess I could have if I had a keyboard connected to my iPad, I could do the same thing. I uh, would make this a little easier. Um, it's hard for me to see kind of based on what I'm doing there, but that's, that's close enough for now. Now let's go to these faders. We need to go and go to not values, but messages. All right. We have a MIDI control, control change message, uh, set to channel one, which is constant, um, controller. We have, uh, index scale value scale. So I'm going to go to where it says controller. We're going to set this to constant. So basically what control message do we want this to be? Um, that's, that's great. That works for me. Uh, value. We're going to go down here and say, um, uh, uh, what do we want that to be constant? Yep. What value do we want that message to be? So we'll do control message CC one and let's say, um, value one, actually, excuse me, we want value zero to one twenty seven, right? Cause it's a fader. So we're adding a fader, click that. And we're going to change value, uh, to value and make that zero to one twenty seven. Let's do the same thing over here. Control change. Uh, what did we set that to? We did channel one. We're going to do constant. Did we say, yep, CC one. So our control message is one. Uh, value, yep, we're going to leave set to value. Let's make sure all this looks good. One, controller one. Um, and then value zero to 127. Let's make this message two. Okay. So now uh, let's press play to go to our control surface here. Uh, let's give you the side by side. And um, let's map our click volume. We'll just use lives like default click here. So uh, if we're using lives built in metronome, that would be uh, our preview queue. So we do command M, we'll click that. I'm gonna move my fader, okay, so that's mapped. And then I'll go over to master volume and I'm gonna move that over here and that's mapped, okay? So now let's, um, and you can see, once I get out of mini map mode, uh, see how those faders are synced up to where their location is in live. So let me um, zoom in here. Okay, and this might look a little weird, but uh, we've got our master and then our preview queue, which is right here. So watch as I bring the master down, all right? See, so that's gonna come down in live. And I'm doing this over Wi-Fi, so it's a little glitchy, which is why, again, a reason why I suggest you you definitely need to um, do this wired and not wirelessly. Um, now, let me go into live and let's pull live's fader down and watch touch OSC. See how touch OSC is responding? Okay, so at the same time that I do that, we'll talk about how I did that in just a second. Um, and if you followed all the settings we talked about in our connection setup, then that should work automatically. Let's do our click. All right, so same thing. And then I can do it in reverse. I can move the iPad and that's gonna move Ableton. Um, when it comes to faders, what you should do over in live, let's zoom back out and let's show you this full screen. Um, what you should be concerned with command M is setting your minimum and maximum value. So typically with faders, I'm gonna do command M and then I'll go into here and set these to zero, right? So that I can't go beyond zero, that's super important. So even if I like max this out all the way to master, uh, my master is the, the top is zero. It's not gonna be plus six dB. Same thing with click, all the way up, I'm gonna be at zero, okay? Which is super important. Now, how in the world am I doing this bi-directional thing? Well, I'm using touch OSC bridge, it doesn't matter your connection, type um as long as uh you're set to send and receive from that connection and in live go to your preferences command comma you want to go to link tempo midi on the input side uh in my case touch osc bridge is where i am i want to make sure remote is enabled right that's going to allow me to control live but then to get feedback back to touch osc you want to go to out touch osc bridge or whatever your connection type is and make sure that remote is enabled and as long as you do that that's where live is going to get those commands and is going to receive the feedback uh, so that as you switch this and as i move the fader in live it's also moving in touch osc and as i move in touch osc it's also moving in ableton live which is great okay so i hope you enjoyed a look at that lesson from my touch osc course in that course i show you how to control ableton live uh, with touch osc how to design and create your own interfaces as well as how to control touch osc with ableton live so i walk you through how to send midi commands to touch osc to change pages to keep faders in sync um, if you're interested in touch osc i think you're going to enjoy it to check out that course you could head to from studio to stage.com slash subscribe when you subscribe you get access to the touch osc course 
plus every other course I have on the site. Plus you get credits that you can use in the shop. You get access to the exclusive community, exclusive discounts just for you as a subscriber, plus a monthly call each week, uh, each month where you can join me and the rest of the, uh, from studio stage students where we can talk about anything, touch OSC, Ableton live, and I will answer your questions. Now you can get all of this and you can subscribe monthly or annually for more details for pricing, head to from studio slash subscribe. And if this is your first time here on the YouTube channel, do me a favor, hit subscribe to the channel. I post a new video every single day, 10 a.m. Central every day, Monday through Sunday, 10 a.m. Central. If you like content like this, you'll love the channel. Hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.